Good morning, greetings, friends, and welcome to The Bright Side, your nutritional program dedicated to the understanding of the vast world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. I'm your host, pharmacist Ben, nutritional pharmacist from Boulder, Colorado. I use nutritional supplements where other healthcare practitioners use toxic pharmaceutical drugs and sometimes deadly medical procedures. If you suspect that there are natural nutritional roads to your health and vitality and well-being and to addressing your health challenges, whatever they may be, but you don't know where to begin, you have come to the right place. As you listen to The Bright Side every day, you are more and more in control of your body, you are more and more knowledgeable, and you know you can overcome any health challenge. That is why we are here every day on The Bright Side, helping clear up the sometimes confusing world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. Over the last 32 years of practicing pharmacy, I have seen drug-free recoveries from diabetes, hypertension, obesity, skin diseases like psoriasis, eczema, rosacea, acne, digestive ailments, autoimmune issues of all kinds, recoveries that by the standards of modern medicine can only be called a miracle. But what is in the world of the body, what is in the world of biology, standard operating procedure. Because the human body, the human biological system is a healing system. It's a regenerating system. It is designed divinely to heal and renew itself on a moment to moment basis. And while some folks may call that healing, renewing, regenerating system a miracle, it really is just the way the body works. If you have questions about health, nutrition, prescription drugs, if you want to wean yourself off your meds and get on a good nutritional supplement program, questions about our Truth Skin Health products, if you have a success story you'd like to share, if you want to contribute to the conversation, 844-236-6010 is our number on the bright side, 844-236-6010. If you have questions about our Truth Skin Health products or the Longevity products or the Longevity business, 844-236-6010 uh, is our number on the bright side. And uh, if you've been, if you were uh, at the convention this past weekend, I'd love to hear from you what you thought about the convention. If you went to our our CBD talks, I got to do a couple of talks with my good buddy Sanjeev. Uh, we talked about CBD cannabidiol. It was very surprising to me how most folks hadn't heard of CBD, or at least hadn't, if they've heard if they heard about it, didn't really understand what CBD was. We've been talking about it on this program for a long time. This uh, really miraculous medicinal compound that's found not just in the hemp plant or the marijuana plant, but really found throughout nature and especially found in the human body. CBD and these plant compounds are part of human biochemistry, human neurochemistry. And this is what accounts for their incredible, mind-blowing, wide-ranging spectrum of benefits. The cannabinoids, including, by the way, tetrahydrocannabinoid, uh, which, which everybody knows is THC, the stuff that gets you high. All those cannabinoids, including the stuff that gets you high, have incredible health benefits for folks who have blood sugar problems, for folks who have pain, for folks who have anxiety issues, insomnia issues, seizure disorders. It actually was just approved as a drug for dealing with seizure disorders. It's soon to be approved uh, as drugs for anti-anxiety issues and also for, uh, for blood sugar for helping folks who are, de or who are dealing with diabetes. These cannabinoid compounds that are found throughout nature, what's so cool about them is you can actually ingest them yourself and, and bump up your cannabinoids, your natural cannabinoids, which we make. You can eat a plant cannabinoid, a plant, and by the way, cannabinoid is C-A-N-N-A-B-A-N-O-I-D, cannabinoid. These cannabinoids, these cannabinoid compounds are uh, replaceable. You can eat a plant and get your cannabinoids bumped up. And cannabinoid deficiency in adults is not uncommon. I would say it's more common than not, actually. We have deficiencies in our own cannabinoids that can be behind problems like insomnia, problems like jitteriness and anxiety, problems like blood sugar issues, problems like uh, seizure disorders. Cannabinoid deficiencies, by the way, can arise from problems with fats. Cannabinoids are, are, are produced in the body in response to fats, specifically essential fatty acids. So a great way to bump up your own cannabinoids is to make sure you're getting on your, uh, using your ultimate EFAs. Of course, if you have any fat malabsorption issues, and by the way, that's what we're talking about here today, is issues around fats, you could very well be dealing with a cannabinoid deficiency. Anyway, Longevity's got uh, three new cannabinoid products. They are out. They were released at the convention, and I did a, a talk on the importance of or the health relevance of these cannabinoid compounds. You can find all the Longevity products, including the new cannabinoid products, and uh, 
the uh, Healthy Start Pack and the Beyond Tangy Tangerine, all the, all the fine longevity products we talk about on the Bright Side at brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, criticalhealthnews.com. You can also see a, uh, a click on the Join the Team link if you want to start a longevity business. If you are health inclined, if you want to make a difference in the world at the most fundamental level there is, which is the level of health, if you're an entrepreneur and you want to check out a good business opportunity, or if you just want to get your longevity products at the wholesale price, click on the Join the Team link at brightsideben.com. Pharmacistben.com or criticalhealthnews.com or call 866-735-2470, 866-735-2470 for more information. All right, so we're talking the fats. We're talking the fatty system of the body. The cannabinoids are part of the fatty system in the body. In chemistry and biology, uh, we have two main compartments or two main ways that chemicals exist. All of chemistry and all of bio, all the molecules of uh, chemistry and biology can be distinguished into these two compartments, water compartment or fat. The water compartment or the fat compartment, so-called hydrophilic substances, those are water-loving, and lipophilic, fat-loving. Forgive my digression here. Uh, we've talked about this a lot, but I think it's really important to keep reinforcing it so we understand that with how the how the essential fatty acids and the short chain fatty acids and the oxaloacetate that we've been talking about and apple cider vinegar and how all these things fit in, how all these things work in, work into biochemistry. It's important, first of all, to make that distinction and then to see how these things, these two elements differ, the water and the fat. The watery part of the body is involved in how energy flows. Just think flow, water flows, energy flows. Energy flows through the watery part of the body. In fact, when we say water flows, what we're really talking about is water energy flowing. So there's a flowing nature to the B vitamins, to vitamin C, to the electrolytes, potassium and calcium, and, uh, and uh, magnesium and sodium, and, and uh, these so-called electrical or electrified minerals. Plant-derived minerals are all electrified. This is what makes these plant-derived minerals so special. They're electrified. That's why they go into water. You can't put water, you can't put minerals into water, really, but you can put the plant-derived minerals into water. That alone ha tells you the distinction, the difference that sometimes people get confused about minerals. That's why we always say there's different kinds of minerals. main difference between plant-derived minerals and rock minerals is that plant-derived minerals flow. They have an electrical nature because they, go, they can react with water much more efficiently. Rocks cannot react with water. Plant-derived minerals can react with water. That's the very essence of the difference between these two kinds of minerals. One flows and goes into water. It's easily hydrated, and the other doesn't. The fact that it's easily hydrated makes it of a completely different character than rock minerals. So if anybody ever asks you, or if you've ever asked, what's the difference? And I, aluminum's really bad. Why is it in the plant-derived minerals? Blah, 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 blah. You're not, you're not understanding. You want to understand the idea of hydration, that electrified minerals can go into water effectively. That allows them to, to have an electrical, support electrical energy inside the body in a way that rocks can't. Rocks sink. They're inert. They disturb chemistry. Electrical minerals, these hydrated minerals, go into cell reactions. So electrolytes have a flowing nature. It's how energy is conducted. Same with the B vitamins, same with vitamin C, these hydrophilic substances. Fats, on the other hand, store energy. Energy is locked up in fats. It flows in water. It's locked up in fats. And if you're thinking ahead one step, you say, well, they, maybe, there's a maybe there's an interaction between the two. And indeed there is. The interaction between how energy is stored and how it's released and flows is how electricity works in the body. And by the way, electricity is a synonym for energy. Everything in the body occurs via energy. Everything in the body occurs via electricity. The body is a, a primarily an electrical system. The chemistry supports the electricity. Fundamentally, we are electrical beings. The most fundamental science is the science of electricity. Physics. Biology comes after physics. Actually, biology comes after chemistry. It goes physics in terms of the life sciences. It goes physics first, which is elect electricity. Then you have your, uh, then you got your chemistry, which is all of the nutrients. And then you have your biology, which is us. 
and that's the flow of, that's the flow of, uh, of the structure of the body. It starts off at the most invisible abstract structure, energy, moves into chemistry, then it comes into what we can see, which is biology. The point is, is you gotta work electrical if you wanna be at the fundamental level, and that's what we're talking about here. All right, 844-236-6010 is our number. I'm Pharmacist Ben. You're listening to The Bright Side. We'll take a commercial break and come back with more good health information right after this. We are back on the bright side. Got lines open for you. 844-236-6010. 844-236-6010. If you want to purchase any of the longevity products your advertiser recommended on the program, call the Bright Side Ben phone team at 866-735-2470. 866-735-2470. Or you can click on the join the team link at brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, or criticalhealthnews.com. And also, please check out our Truth Skin Health products at truthtreatments.com if you want to check out some super ridiculously mega potent skincare products. We did away with all the non functional and non active ingredients in skincare products and gave you just left behind just the concentrated active and functional ingredients. You shouldn't have to pay for somebody's water and silicon and oil and, and emulsifiers and surfactants and preservatives. That's why I created my Truth Skin Health products, our Truth Transdermal C Serum, Truth Transdermal C Balm, Truth Omega-6 Healing Cream, and our Truth Retinol products, and now our Truth Cleansers. Truth Hyaluronic Honey Cleanser and Truth Peppermint Salicylic Cleanser are all up at truthtreatments.com, truthtreatments.com. Okay, so we're talking about this this distinction, this important distinction between water and fat. Water, uh, stuff flows in water, energy flows in water, and energy is stored in fat. And they work together, that's true. All of life is this interaction between the energy that's stored and the energy that travels and flows in the uh, energy producing machinery inside a cell, the so-called mitochondria. And you will be hearing more and more about the mitochondria over the coming years and decades because it's becoming recognized that aging in many ways is a mitochondria issue because it's an energy issue. Everything is energy. It's all about energy. Chemistry works because it helps facilitate energy, or chemistry is about the movement of energy. That's what chemistry is. Chemistry is flow. Chemistry is is things changing shape. It's all chemistry is. Shape, 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 shape shape-shifting. Not just shape, but shape-shifting. Chemistry is just shape-shifting. But you know what? Shape is not really a thing. We see these chem... We're deluded by the the solidity, the apparent solidity of chemical structures. If you remember your chemistry or if you've seen these little stick figures, these chemical stick figures, it looks like these are things. There's no real bonds and sticks. This is all just energy, magnetic connections between things. It's all magnets, really. The shape of chemicals are held together by magnets. If you, can, if you understand how to play with magnets, you can understand chemistry. I've said tinker toys, but really, that's kind of misleading. It's magnets. Molecules are magnets. They're magnetic. And rearranging the magnets is how chemistry works. But how it happens, that's pretty mind-blowing right there. All of these, all these magnets are trapped in fats. And then they're released by uh, some kind of magical chemistry that takes place that turns the fatty energy that's stored in things like essential fatty acids and dietary fats and turns them into something that the body can use energetically through the water-soluble nutrients. The water-soluble nutrients carry the energy that's stored in the fat-soluble nutrients. That's how it all works. You could say that the water-soluble nutrients are carriers and the fat-soluble nutrients are storage. See, energy is in a free-flowing state, it's dynamic, it's in a hydrated, water-soluble state, but it is stored in fats. Fats get into the body, like the water-soluble nutrients get into the body, through food. The energy that's stored in fats has to essentially be released by the digestive system. It is the digestive system that opens up these these fat fat energy closets or fat energy systems. These fat energy systems, the energy in the fats is released through the digestive system and especially through the stomach, the pancreas, the gallbladder, the liver, and the intestine. The lymphatic system also plays a role here. And there's a lot of things that can go wrong. And this is a major, major, major cause of aging and disease is the inability to extract fats because of pancreas problems, stomach problems, gallbladder problems, especially gallbladder problems. The gallbladder is so underappreciated when it comes to this whole idea of releasing fat uh, energy from fats. The liver, the intestine, 
lymphatic congestion. All of these play a role in, in, uh, in preventing the body from being able to get the benefit from fats. And this is where a lot of diseases come from. I would venture to say all diseases, all chronic long-term degenerative diseases have some kind of aspect of an inability of the body to extract the energy from fats. And that's why you focus on the digestive system because the digestive system is where all this happens. At the level of the stomach, if you have deficiencies in digestive enzymes, or if your stomach juices are not acidic enough, if you're not making enough acid, if there's damage to the, to the stomach lining, if you got the wrong kind of bacteria, something called H. pylori you may have heard of, a bacteria called H. pylori, if you have, that can mess up the, the acid secretion at the level of the stomach, and that will, that will uh, disrupt fat absorption. If your stomach, you're not making enough stomach acid, that will disrupt fat absorption. If you can acidify the stomach in any way, that's in your interest. It's in your interest to do things like apple cider vinegar to acidify the contents of the stomach. It's in your interest to use something called betaine, B-E-T-A-I-N-E, which you get in the ultimate enzymes. Betaine HCL, technically, that will acidify the digestive system, or the stomach, I should say. Anything you can do to support acid in the stomach is going to help the body release the, all the energy that's trapped in your fats. If you don't have enough stomach acid, that can affect the bile, that can affect the pancreas, that can affect bacteria in the intestine. Everything downstream will be affected by not enough acid in the stomach. If you are on Nexium or you are on, or on Prilosec, guess what? You're suppressing acid production in the stomach. Not a good idea. And you will see, if you look up uh, uh, side effects in these so-called um, uh, acid, oh, I forgot what they call them here. There's a technical name for them, whatever, these acid suppressants. And it doesn't have to be the high-tech acid suppressants. It, it, proton pump inhibitors is what they call them, PPIs. It doesn't have to be a high-tech proton pump inhibitor. It could be just a plain old Tagamet. If you're taking Tagamet or Zantac, Anything that you do to suppress acid production at the level of the stomach is going to compromise fat absorption and f uh, the utilization of fats downstream. At the level of uh, the pancreas, the pancreas is supposed to hit the, hit the food when it leaves the intestine with a big jolt of enzymes. If you have pancreatic issues, also bicarbonate comes out of the pa uh, pancreas. If you have any kind of pancreatic issues, that can cause problems with the release of energy from fats. If you ha are diabetic, that's a pancreatic problem. Don't forget that diabetes is about the pancreas, not just about blood sugar. It's also about the pancreas as an organ. That can have an effect on, uh, especially type 1 diabetes, that can have an effect on uh, how well we absorb fats. Diabetes can affect how well you utilize energy from fats. Any kind of pancreatic issue can do that. And then there's the gallbladder. The gallbladder is one of the most common sites, maybe the most common site of digestive issues. Half a million gallbladders are taken out of uh, people's bodies every year, more. That was in 2012 to half a million. Today, probably, I don't know, maybe 600,000 uh, gallbladders are removed every year or close to it. Guess what the number one issue when you have gallstones or gallbladder problems is? Food. The wrong kind of food. The gallbladder is exquisitely responsive to the type of food we eat exquisitely sensitive to wrong foods, to food allergens. Just fasting alone will help your gallbladder pain. Just all you got to do is that, let alone changing the way you eat. If you change the way you eat, you can not only prevent it, you may be able to even reverse so-called silent gallstones. Gallbladder is incredibly responsive to gluten, to food intolerances, uh, food toxins, food allergens. All right. I'm Pharmacist Ben. Got lines open for you. 844-236-6010 is our number. We will come back on the bright side with more good health information, your phone calls, and uh, we'll also do a couple of stories from the news here. 844-236-6010 is our number. We'll be back after this. We are back on the bright side. Pharmacist Ben here, 844-236-6010 is our number, and we will get your calls here momentarily. We do have lines open for you, 844-236-6010. If you want to purchase any of the longevity products you hear advertised or recommended on the bright side, including the new CBD products, CBD for anxiety, CBD, CBD for pain, CBD cannabidiol is... Uh, 
the latest and greatest. It's not a fad. It's the real deal. The stuff works unbelievably well for everything from cancer to seizure disorders. And just get online and look up the reviews or just use it yourself. If you want to check out the Longevity CBD products, go to brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, or criticalhealthnews.com. Or you can call 866-735-2470, 866-735-2470. All right, got lines open at 844-236-6010, reading from the Journal of Applied Physiology. Sitting for long hours found to reduce blood flow to the brain. A team of researchers with Liverpool Johns Moores University in the UK has found evidence of reduced blood flow to the brain in people who sit for long periods of time. Most people know that sitting for long periods of time without getting up now and then is unhealthy. Indeed it is. The blood circulates and as it circulates, it not only generates a very important electrical charge, it also delivers nutrition to all the organs of the body, all the cells of the body, and especially the ones in the brain. The brain utilizes 25% of the nutrients that are in the blood. If you're sitting, those nutrients aren't going to get to the brain as efficiently. Likewise, toxins aren't going to be removed from the brain. Likewise, oxygen isn't going to get to the brain. All are recipes for disaster, for issues involving cognition, even strokes. That's why you want to get up and move your body. That's why it's not all only about nutritional supplementation. It's also about movement, exercise, and you don't need a rest. You don't need a membership at the gym. You can just jump up and down on a rebounder. Jumping up and down is an ideal way not only to improve circulation of the blood, but also improve circulation of the lymph. The lymph is the system that delivers the fatty nutrients to the cells. The fatty nutrients are not uh, as they don't travel as efficiently through the blood as they do through the lymph. Things like vitamin E and hormones. And detoxification occurs through the, the lymph and moving the body around. It's a great way to clean your brain in addition to cleaning your body, preventing toxic buildup in the brain and preventing toxic buildup in tissues by jumping up and down on a rebounder. Drinking more water is another great way to keep things moving around. Drinking water plus exercising. Of course, you do need your mighty 90 essential nutrients, but don't underestimate the importance of movement and the health issues that can be associated with just sitting and just being sedentary. If you ever hear stories about people talking how their grandparents used to smoke and drink and eat all kinds of crappy food, lard, and they ended up living to be 100, a lot of it is because they were moving. They were farming and they were walking. And they were doing things to move their body around in a way that we don't, they didn't live sedentary 100 years ago. There's no sedentary lifestyles 100 years ago, or at least not among regular folks. There are probably people who were wealthy and sedentary, but most folks were moving around. All right, from uh, this one is really cool. One of the talks I did uh, this weekend at the Longevity Convention involved the importance of connective tissue for the skin. Now, you guys know. Uh, if you've been listening to this program for any length of time, that I'm always talking about connective tissue. We have a new connective tissue supplement available at truthtreatments.com, collagen recovery complex for building connective tissue. Building connective tissue is one of the most multi, uh, multi-beneficial health strategies you could ever choose. If you want to target a system in the body that would cover the most parts, Targeting the connective tissue would be something you want to at least think about. In fact, all of the signs of aging, the visible signs of aging, are really connective tissue issues. And even the invisible signs of aging, especially cardiovascular disease, is a connective tissue problem. Yes, heart disease, coronary artery disease, arrhythmias involve the connective tissue. I was talking to a doctor about this this weekend, and, and they had no clue. They didn't, had no idea that the electrical energy of the heart that goes awry when you have in, uh, arrhythmias, AFib, for example, is a connective tissue problem. Connective tissue and the heart go hand in hand. Thus, it should be no surprise when I read this headline to you, deep forehead wrinkles may signal a higher risk for cardiovascular mortality. They might as well have gone to my talk this weekend. That's exactly what we talked about. Are wrinkles just an inevitable consequence of aging or could they simple signal something more sinister? That's a, head, that's a quote from this article which just came out today. I talked about that this weekend. I said, wrinkles are cardiovascular disease of the skin. Cardiovascular disease is wrinkles of the heart. This is so important. All diseases involve the same basic phenomena, even aging, which isn't really a disease, of course. All bodily breakdown involves the same basic phenomena. This is the critical message. That's the only message you need to take home if you want to change the way you look at the body, change the way you look, and change the way you look at the body. 
If you want to completely revolutionize how you or how the medical model takes care of the body or addresses health, it would be by understanding that the body breaks down generically and wrinkles are heart disease of the, of the forehead. Heart disease is wrinkles of the heart. Parkinson's disease is wrinkles of the brain. Alzheimer's disease is wrinkles of the brain. It's all the same problem. It's deterioration of the tissue followed by inflammation. Uh, this is a study This came out of uh, Munich at the ESC Congress 2018. That's the European Society of Cardiology Congress 2018. People who have lots of deep forehead wrinkles may have a higher risk for dying of cardiovascular disease. You can look at this. That means you can look at somebody's skin and assess their risks for heart disease. That's the beauty of the skin to me. And if you're a skincare professional out there, I know there's a lot of estheticians who listen to this program. Because you speak skin, because you understand the language of the skin, you are exquisitely positioned in the world of healthcare to assess the overall health of your client. I know a lot of estheticians believe, oh, I can't really diagnose and I can't do health stuff. Yes, you can. You don't need to diagnose. You just say, hey, you're breaking down here. Get on Ben's Collagen Recovery Complex. Eat your bone broth protein. Make sure you're getting enough vitamin C. Make sure you're using peels. Doing peels can help drive the production of connective tissue. Now, you're not going to drive the production. Local treatments like peels and, and topical vitamin C may help you with your skin, but they're not going to help you with your interior, the internal breakdown of the cardiovascular system. But you should know that when you have heart problems or your body's breaking down inside, it's going to reallocate the vitamin C in your skin to your heart. And that's going to leave you deficient at the level of the skin, which you can address by topical strategies. All right. 844-236-6010. Let me do one more here, and then we'll uh, look at your calls. Researchers report startling inflammasome discovery in Alzheimer's study. The inflammasome is the, all of the chemicals to, that collectively uh, are involved in inflammation. And it turns out now they discovered miraculously that Alzheimer's disease is an, is an inflammatory issue. In recent years, researchers have largely converged on the role of inflammation in the development and progression of Alzheimer's disease. Studies over the past decade have revealed unexpected interactions between the brain and the immune system. Not under, unexpected if you've been listening to this program. It's inflammation everywhere, whether it's in the brain or anywhere else. Alzheimer's disease is just an example of what happens in the brain when the brain A, deteriorates, and then B, inflames. You get dementia. If it happens in other parts of the brain, you end up with Parkinson's disease. It's the same thing. The body breaks down generically. All right, 844-236-6010 is our number. Let's see. Uh, okay, we'll, we'll get your calls here when we come back from our break. Our line's open, 844-236-6010. You're listening to The Bright Side. I'm Pharmacist Ben. We'll be back after this. back on the bright side. I'm Pharmacist Ben. 844-236-6010 is our number. And it's that time again. Let's go to Denver. Stay in Denver and talk to Stuart. Hey, what's up, Stuart? Hey, good morning. Good morning hey, to you. I got a question for you. Okay. You know, I work with people with disabilities and stuff, and so I can't get into too much detail because of HIPAA, but uh, a whole bunch of people are getting on oxygen and CPAP and all this Stuff, which is costing our government lots and lots of money, but they give it out like candy. What could be done? And well, what is, is CPAP? It true first that once you st- what is that's CPAP? That's the nighttime. That's the nighttime uh, mask that you wear. So but what what is the P in CPAP? Devices. What does the last P stand for? Do you know? You know pulmonary. what CPAP stands for? Yeah, isn't CPAP. It, the P is pulmonary. Pulmonary pressure. Pressure. Pressure, okay. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, so CPAP machine is a machine that pushes air inso- into the body because people can't suck it up correctly. They're clogged or yeah. there's some kind of deficiency at the level of the muscles or the lungs aren't absorbing. Some kind, some, for, for whatever reason, people aren't getting the benefits of oxygen, so it has to be pushed into the, in through the nose via a continuous positive airway pressure system. That's what CPAP stands for. So what it's telling you is, is you've got a breathing problem, a respiratory problem, and it could involve all kinds of issues, but usually inflammation, it, the key element is inflammation at the level of the lungs 
or at the level of the uh, sinus cavity, the, the nasal cavity. So you're, blo you're blocked up, basically. Sleep apnea can cause it. Uh, lung, lung problems can cause it. So there's, there's really the idea is you've got to work on the respiratory system. Now, if it's damaged somehow, usually smoking is the number one way it gets damaged, you've got to work at it at that level, and that means you've got to get off your cigarettes. Or you can also yeah, improve the... doctors the... don't tell people to. They well, tell people well, they, you know, should. they should, but... I don't know. We just, just got to use common sense. But also there's microinflammation that occurs at the level of the, where the breath comes into the no, in through the nose to the, to the lungs. And that's where diabetes comes in and blood sugar problems and also digestive problems. You, you can do a lot to yeah, reduce, they... reduce inflammation at the level of the sinuses by working on your digestive system. You know what I'm saying? All these so, clients have all of those. Yeah. Oh, of course they do. Of course they do. By the time you're into you're into the uh, into the uh, uh, you, you need a CPAP. You're at the point where you need a CPAP machine. You've got long-standing problems. The good news is is that you can turn these things around very very quickly. I would be if I had CPAP, I'd be working on my blood. Or if I was using a CPAP machine or needed a, a CPAP machine, the first thing I would do is work on my blood sugar system. And then work on my digestive system, assuming I wasn't smoking. If you're smoking, that you got to stop that, of course. But assuming you're not smoking, the first thing you want to do is you want to work on the gut and the blood sugar system. And that's particularly true if you have sleep apnea with it or, or snoring. All of these are signs of an inflammatory, yeah. inflammatory condition inside the, 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 breathing, the, the breathing pipe, the, the breathing machinery, the breathing plumbing in the system, the lungs and the sinus cavities, et cetera. So what you want, your air, you want to keep your airways open without a CPAP machine. Focus first on whatever is the cause of the inflammation. Usually that's going to involve something with the digestive system and the blood sugar system. And like you say, most people who are on CPAP machines have some element of disc, messed up blood sugar and digestion. That's where I would be working. And it doesn't sound, yeah, no, most you, med medical people aren't going to make that connection, but they are connected via the bridge of inflammation. Go ahead. Yeah. Yeah, that I asked sense? the guy who did the, yeah, I asked the guy who did the sleep study, yeah, who is the one that really the technician is the one that records the CPAP. Asked if right. ever had said anybody who didn't get a CPAP, and he said no. Say, I, I lost you there, no. Stuart. You, you cut out there. Say that one oh. more time. Sorry about that. Uh, so I talked to the technician who did the test, and he's the one that recommends the machine, the medical device. Yeah. And what did he and say? I asked him, well, does it? Does anybody ever come in and not get a CPAP? And he said no. Do they ever tell people about <laughs> what we just talked about? Does, does he? Did you talk to him about the di the no. blood sugar connection? Of course not. No, right, of course well, not. That's just that, that's the state of yeah, our no, medical. What, what about what? A, Go ahead. What about fats? Oh. The, the use of, the the reason? Yeah, the fatty vitamins. Fat the vitamin E. Vitamin E in particular plays a major role in lung health. Uh, the, there's a lot of there, there is a lot of uh, energy is stored in fats. And there's there's a major relationship between fat malabsorption and problems with the fatty system of the body and the lungs. Uh, vitamin E, alpha lipoic acid, mm, excuse me, selenium, uh, zinc. These all have a these all play a, a role in how the body processes energy at the level of the fats. So I would be using definitely high doses of vitamin E, selenium, uh, like 600 micrograms a day, the ultimate selenium, 50 milligrams a day of zinc picolinate, also uh, essential fatty acids, the ultimate EFAs are very important for the secretions inside the lungs. The secretions also play a role in how energy is handled. So making sure you're on your ultimate EFAs, uh, in addition to all the digestive, all the things about the digestive system. And by the way, the ultimate enzymes are not just for the digestive system, they're also anti-inflammatory. So taking them on an empty stomach may be helpful. And then vitamin C. Yeah, I, rec well, I recommend with meals and between meals. That's with the enzymes between meals, absolutely. And also vitamin C, while it's not yeah. really, a, it, it works with the fatty system of the body, it also plays a major role in lung health. Hi, I'm going to get one more call All in right. here. Well, I, uh, I hope I helped. I knew you'd Anything be a big else? help. Thanks, Ben. Thanks, Stuart. Take no, care, buddy. Thank you very much, Ben. I knew you'd have be a big help. All right. Take care, man. All right. Let's go to South Carolina, I think, or Missouri, it says here. Uh, Dan, wherever you are, in South Carolina or Missouri. What's up, Dan? Yeah, I'm in Missouri. Um, okay. I wanted okay, to know, um, I've had some really uh, unbelievable uh, success using a stun gun to treat various venomous bites. Mm, like I've heard of that. Reduce, Black Widow. For yourself? Or what, what, are you oh, a therapist? Oh, yeah, myself and a couple of friends, actually. You've been bitten? Oh, by You've Brown been... Recluse? Yeah. Yeah. You live in Missouri, you're doing something wrong if you haven't been bit. Are you serious? It's that bad? 
Well, they didn't even know what caused it until 1957. It was just a, a skin malady that they, they never did put the spider together with the rotten holes in people's skin. Isn't that interesting? So I've heard of using um, using electrical shock uh, shocks shotguns, stun guns they call I guess you call right. them for snake bites. I hadn't yeah. heard of that for spiders, but it, it makes sense. Nobody really knows how that works. Although I can tell you that the body heals via electricity, so well, it's not totally surprising. Go ahead. I, I've got a real quick story that, that's just amazing. I okay. was down in Oklahoma. I'm not going to name the town because I don't want to get these good folks in trouble. Okay. But um, I got introduced to an EMT. I was building a custom house, and they threw a barbecue, and, and this one guy was an EMT, and I thought, I'll have a little fun here. I'll tell this guy what's going on. And I said, have you guys got brown recluse spiders down here? I hate those things. And he said, yeah, and if you get bit, let me know. I'll fix you. And I went, yeah, right. I know what those bites look like. And he goes, no, really? And I said, how would you do that? I just milked him a little bit because I wanted to know what he knew. And he said, every EMT in our town, and there was at least 25 or 30 of them, I guess, we all carry stun guns. Is that right? And I said, I said, there ain't no way you're using that on me. I was being devil's advocate, kind of. And he goes, no, no, you don't understand. We just put it on there and just tap it. He said, it's no worse than getting stung off, getting shocked off a doorknob. And I said, what does your boss think of this? He said, the boss knows it works, but he can't stand behind us because the AMA would hang us all, you know. But, huh, buddy, that's it, very, it, how it, do you, how do you, do you have to? Hang on a second there. Do you have to do it right away, or can you do it like more? No, actually, I didn't know. I was brown recluse bit for about four or five days. I thought, you know, if I ever get over puberty, I'll be lucky. I, I thought it was a, a boil or something on my right below my belt line. And I went to a neighbor that was a nurse, and she had seen the bites, and, and I said, this thing is huge now. It's like four inches across. It's, it's pink. It's ro rose up about a half inch in the middle with a white dot right in the middle. And the pain was shooting to my ankle so bad I couldn't hold a conversation. And I said, go get it. She had one of these first-generation stun guns. She had been, I knew they had it. And I was playing with it, sitting there on the couch, trying to figure out how quick you could get on and off the button. And I laid it down, and the thing slid over and bumped my leg and went pop. It was holding a residual charge. Wow. In other words, the, the capacitor didn't discharge completely. And I thought, well, that's quicker than anybody can get on and off the button. So I played with it a little bit. I'd shoot it in the air and then touch it to my leg, and it'd go pop. Well, anybody can take that. So my buddy could see it a lot better than I could where I, you know, I couldn't twist around to put it across the bike. We did that five or six times around that bike. Within 30 minutes, 90% wow. of the pain was gone. Within wow. three days, it had healed totally up, a little bitty scab, half the size of a pencil eraser, and it was over. That's awesome. That's awesome. All right, so you can get a stun. Anybody can get a stun gun, right? Yeah. All right, cool. That's good new Good. Good to know. I heard of it for snake bites. I guess it makes perfect sense it would work for any well, kind of that. Well, the only bite. thing that, and of course the AMA has got warnings on the Internet, not an approved procedure, right? They'd rather see holes rot out in you. But evidently, missionaries are carrying these in third world countries. And Very when, interesting. Very when interesting. When people get bit, they, they bring them to the missionary. He shocked them, and they're back That's out in the field in an hour. Get a book called Heal. I got to go here, Dan. Thanks for your call. Hey, get a book called you. Healing is Healing is Voltage by Dr. Jan Jerry Tennant. And you'll get a good idea of uh, the relationship between electricity and health. All right, I'm Pharmacist Ben. That's all the time we have for today. Thanks for listening to The Bright Side. Have a wonderful, beautiful, awesome, spectacular day. We'll talk to you all later, folks. Bye for now.